can you see see now? Can you see my sharing now? Okay, sorry. Uh, so it looks like uh, there is some technical issue. Uh, sorry about that. Let me uh, start from the beginning. Um, I do. I apologize for that. Um, let me uh, start from the beginning. Give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to reset my environment and then show you from the beginning. Okay. Um, all right, so can you confirm if you're able to see me and hear me Okay, uh, then I'll go ahead. Can anyone confirm? Okay, cool. So uh, I'm gonna uh, start from the beginning uh, for the folks uh, who have missed it. Maybe it looks like there is a technical glitch. Uh, Okay, so uh, in the in this uh, uh, talk today, I'm going to discuss about a, a new uh, uh, project called Istio. Uh, Istio is basically used for uh, like mostly mostly uh, is 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 like a, a very good tool for uh, getting visibility inside the uh, microservices deployments. So if you are using a large microservices based application, and then you need some kind of uh, visibility inside the microservices, um, maybe, uh, and also for some of the operational aspects like uh, handling failures and then uh, like injecting uh, faults so that you can test the re resiliency of your application and then some um, canary deployments for your microservices. So lots of good, good features are um, um, provided in Istio. Uh, this call is mainly to discuss, like, uh, to to get into the demo piece of it, and then show you how it works in like real time. Not about really discussing what exactly uh, these features are, and then um, uh, how they are useful microservices. So, uh, hopefully, uh, this will be useful for you. Uh, so, let's go and uh, see how we can deploy this uh, Istio microservice mesh on top of Kubernetes or, or OpenShift, and then uh, deploy a sample application, then show you some of the different features of it, OK? Uh, so on my laptop, I have a, on my laptop, I have a, uh, uh, OpenShift cluster that is I'm, I'm going to install that so uh, if, if you have this command line tool called OC which is basically the OpenShift command line tool uh, um, you can basically invoke a OpenShift lo local cluster on your laptop by just one command that is OC cluster up so when you do OC cluster up or uh, against the local docker uh, it is going to install a local OpenShift cluster for me and then this is again a Kubernetes cluster as well. So there is uh, some more features on top of Kubernetes, but you can actually execute uh, you can you can actually execute Kubernetes commands as well. Okay, so give it a couple of seconds before it boots up and then um, creates the cluster. So it is now creating the cluster, uh, creating my initial project and all. Okay, so now you can see my uh, cluster is up on my local machine. Uh, I can go and then log into that. Okay. And then I'm using a user called dev. Nothing is there. Uh, I have a small script that makes this dev a super admin. Um, so I need to log in as uh, system administrator first.
Okay, and then uh, you can see uh, my like I got visibility for all the namespaces in there because I'm the super admin there. So um, in this demo, we are now going to install uh, Istio, um, like deploy the Istio components, and then deploy a sample application as well, both of them. Okay, so let's go and deploy a uh, deploy Istio now. So for that, I'm using I'm using a uh, README here on my GitHub. So if you go to github.com uh, slash Debian master and OpenShift examples, there is a folder called Istio. And then in that, I have all the steps for installing uh, Istio service mesh. OK. So um, as I said, this installation process is pretty easy. Uh, I'm just going to run through some uh, scripts here. So I'm going to switch to OpenShift examples um, repo, and then Istio project, okay, and then run through that demo. I need to do some cleanup, like I need to take out the old one, and then uh, run my demo. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm logging in as cluster administrator first onto the Kubernetes environment or for OpenShift environment. It doesn't really matter. And then switching to the default namespace. And then after that, I'm adding adding some policies like um, uh, the service account or the account that runs the container needs to have privileged access. And also, it should be able to run with any uh, user ID. So I'm giving some privileges here. And then uh, I'm also giving some privileges like netadmin. Uh, what it means is when Istio runs, uh, your your container applications it injects a sidecar uh, which is a proxy uh, called NY proxy. So all the traffic from your application will be routed through that proxy uh, for for all the communication inside the cluster. So um, in order in order to enable that traffic flow, it needs to change some IP table rules. So it injects a init container which does that job of changing the IP table rules. That's why you need the you need a privilege called netadmin. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, clone the Istio um, source code and then basically install um, Istio service mesh. Okay, now I'm into the Istio, uh, and then I'm checking out the specific version, which is the latest version. And then adding some other rules like uh, I need to make the service account of the Istio to be able to read create some uh, third party resources. That's why I need to make it as like super admin. Um, so I'm using cluster admin privileges, but it may need it may not need like full blown uh, cluster admin privileges. It may need only a few of them. So uh, that's it. Almost uh, done with the uh, providing privileges. Uh, these are all privileges that you need for to be able to run um, Istio. Okay, uh, in Kubernetes, you may think these as like RBAC controllers. Um, so there are a bunch of rules for uh, RBAC that you need to execute before you be, you can deploy Istio. Now I'm deploying Istio. Uh, all you need to do is kubectl apply or oc apply, and then uh, there is a YAML called istio.yaml, and then it, this goes and deploys. Uh, the service mesh on top of uh, um, Kubernetes or OpenShift. So you can see all my services got deployed. So let me go and take a look um, in the default namespace. And then you can see everything is running as desired. OK. So uh, the important components are mixer and the pilot. Um, I think ingress and egress uh, basically are not needed in OpenShift. Uh, and, and I believe that. Uh, it may not be true uh, in a, in some scenarios, but most cases I, mean, I was able to run without them uh, for for applications, at least for applications. Okay, um, so now our application uh, the Istio got deployed. Now let's go and uh, deploy some other components like Prometheus and Grafana for uh, getting metrics uh, and then visibility into the application itself. Okay. Uh, these are all add-ons. It's, it's optional if you want to do or not. Um, and the other one is that you see service graph, which gives you the distributed uh, tracing, uh, not, not really distributed tracing, but the 
discovery of services like if service a calls b and then how is that service um, calling is there all this visibility it gives uh, it, service graph gives that okay um, let me go and deploy a sample application uh, which is a book info application which has so this is our uh, microservices application okay so this book info app has something like microservices like product page uh, reviews page ratings page and then details page okay uh, maybe product page calls um, uh, details page and then details will call basically reviews um, and also maybe product page will also call ratings uh, as well so a typical uh, microservice uh, application um, example so was, once it is done i'm going to expose the um, uh, service and then let's take a look here so my service my microservice uh, is up and running uh, there is a details page product page and then ratings page okay and for reviews i have uh, three versions of it like version one version two and version three uh, i'll show you what exactly these three versions are but for reviews i'm actually having three versions of it okay uh, just keep that in mind so for for product page if i create a route and then and then show you uh, the front page of the product page so you can see uh, my product page is up if i go hit this product page you can see my sample application uh, got deployed here so uh, it's a book info sample application uh, that got deployed as a microservice and then uh, let me go and uh, basically show you the service graph um, service graph is here And then uh, if I hit the dot is endpoint here, so that shows you the uh, how the microservice is working. So we call product page, and product page basically call reviews and details page here. Okay. So as a developer, I did not write any code to be to be able to get this visibility. I did not write any Zipkin like I did not include any uh, Zipkin libraries in my code. I did not do any uh, tracing stuff at all. But uh, Istio will basically give you the visibility like how my calls are made from different microservices and then basically uh, what is the QPS uh, across um, these uh, microservices. Um, I'll give you some more, deta more detailed uh, uh, like metrics like how much time it is taking and how much uh, 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 like how many failures are happening across microservices all this will be uh, given uh, i'll show you that but you can see uh, without much work on, on the developer end i was able to deploy my application and then uh, also uh, get this visibility for free right and then if i uh, hit this uh, product page multiple times uh, at different times, it shows you uh, different outputs here on the uh, review side because we have like three versions of it, right? That's why it is showing multiple uh, versions there. But if I uh, refresh this again, uh, you can see uh, from product page, uh, previous page is getting called sometimes version one, sometimes version two, sometimes version three. Um, so it gives you all these details. Um, like without having without a developer having to write all these uh, uh, distributed tracing related uh, um, code at all so that which is very pretty powerful it saves a lot of developer time so uh, i'm gonna look for questions um okay so if you have any questions i will break here for one second uh, so let me put your questions if you have anything Okay, so looks like there are no questions, uh, but I think I think uh, uh, the main takeaway from this, uh, what I want to enforce, what I want to, uh, the main takeaway of this uh, um, service mesh is basically without developer having to write a lot of uh, tracing related co uh, code, you get this visibility out of the box from the service mesh, okay? 
there are few limitations, but um, all this is uh, all this information is pretty uh, useful for us. Uh, without without that, uh, so much of code inside the microservice. And now um, I have three versions of my microservice. You can see version one, version two, and version three. Um, I can apply some uh, rules like routing rules as well. Uh, so, um, so if you, if I go to if I go to the request routing section of the documentation, it shows you clearly how that uh, is working. So uh, each part that you see, or uh, the each microservice that you see, will have the service itself and the proxy that is the envoy proxy running on it as a sidecar. Okay. So the service always sends traffic via uh, proxy, and then the pro the communication happens via these proxies. Okay, so that's how uh, it is basically uh, able to get all the tracing related information from out of the, out of the box. Okay, so now um, let's go and uh, look at some of the other concepts, uh, some of the other uh, use useful features of the um, Istio service mesh. Um, I'm looking for questions again. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So uh, let let me um, show you some of the features now. So we got this uh, service graph, and uh, we are able to see the different request uh, there. If I have multiple projects, do I do do I have to install Istio in every project? So as of now. Uh, as of now, like now, like 0.1.16 version, you have to install uh, in multiple projects. Uh, but uh, I heard they are going to soon change that, like one one um, Istio components, and then it can be shared across multiple projects. But for now, uh, it is like one per each project. Uh, that is because the Istio uh, controller is basically looking at only one namespace as of now. Um, they should be able to look like watch all of the namespaces as well. So that's the limitation um, we have now. Is that clear? Okay, cool. Yeah, but that's going to change soon. So don't don't worry about it. So uh, let me uh, show you the uh, Grafana um, interface. So we we deployed this application, and then let's look at some of the metrics as well. So I've deployed Grafana and then Prometheus, right? So Prometheus will collect all the metrics, and then we can see all that um, tracing related information inside Grafana. So um, let me open this. So you can see there is a Istio dashboard already imported, ready-made. And then uh, this should give you uh, metrics as well. So uh, give it a couple of seconds so that it might load. So what, what the one observation I had is um, this metrics was not working when there is a, a huge time gap between uh, between your container time and your host time. Okay, so what I mean by that is uh, let's say uh, w w this is like a Docker for Mac issue. Uh, w what what's happening is if I do uh, if I do date on my machine if it is january 16th right like it is this is this is what the current date is but uh, what docker is docker for mac is doing is if i do that same date inside docker for mac uh, is it showing this correct one, but I think the STO related ones are showing incorrect ones. So let me um, show you that. So uh, when you have differences between the host time and the container time, uh, it's basically messing up the whole uh, distributed tracing and also the Grafana uh, uh, dashboard traffic and like information as well. So it is 11.56 inside the container, whereas uh, we have like 8:41. This is like a UT, UTC time, but uh, when the date date is different, uh, it is basically messing up all these uh, metrics in there. So that's that's some that's something I observed. I also reported to Istio. Um, they have put it in the. Uh, they they also put it in the um, notes there. Uh, 
uh, but just just be careful on that side and one other observation i've done is um, when you run this uh, cluster the kubernetes cluster or openshift cluster enabling the uh, sc linux uh, it's not able to create that ip table rules which it requires to to be able to function normally and then it is failing there so i had to go and disable sc linux policies for that uh, although i don't like that fact but looks like that's that's a limitation as of now so just keep that in mind that um, if you have sc linux rules enabled then it might not work so just keep that in back of your mind okay now uh, as my grafana is not able to show any kind of metrics um, i'm going to maybe uh, blow up everything and then uh, redo uh, all these all these things uh, maybe i'll see if i have the other environment up and running um, i had another environment okay like that's not up but uh, if i take out everything and then start from scratch again uh, like even if I, if i remove docker images and then start from scratch again it works again okay um, that is because of the um, date date issues so uh, now that we have this uh, application up and running, uh, let's go and see how we can basically uh, do some uh, like controlled request routing. Okay, so for some users, I want to show something, some like version uh, two of the reviews, and for some users, I want to show uh, like for all other users, I want to show version one. Okay, this is very pretty pretty much like a default requirement in e in any microservice based deployment because you want to control like you want to deploy things um, in a controlled manner okay so um, let me show you that if you go to the istio uh, page and then um, i think it is in rules configuration um, like you can con control a lot of things here uh, so let me also show you Okay, I'm in the wrong folder. Now uh, I'm basically executing that that shows some commands since I'm gonna exit from this. Give me a couple of seconds. Okay, okay. now, uh, So uh, the next thing is basically we have three three versions of our review application. So let's go and uh, apply a route route rule and so that it only goes to version one of our application. So we have like reviews one, reviews two, and reviews three. Okay. Um, now every time I refresh, it is going to all three versions of it. So uh, what I'm going to do is apply a rule that so that it will, it will always go to only version one of the application okay um so give me one second i think i have it uh, in the okay tasks i'm on the wrong page <laughs> so configuring request routing so uh, this is what you have so for, first of all uh, what i want to do is route the request only to the version one of the application. So I can basically use a command line tool that is supplied by Istio called Istio CTL, and then apply a rule which says uh, like this. So for all the ratings, uh, you, you need to go to version one. For all the reviews, you, you need to go to version one. And then for all the details, again, version one. Okay, so this is like a default, um, default uh, action, okay? So instead of going to all the three versions now, I can control where exactly my uh, request will be going. So I'm going to execute this. Hopefully I'm in the right folder. OK. Um, OK, I'm, I'm in the wrong folder. OK. Now if I go and execute this, it creates all these four rules. Now this time, uh, if I go and uh, uh, refresh this, you can see the request is always going to version one. Okay, 
because I have applied that rule, uh, which basically tells only use the version one of application. So that is nothing but this reviews version one. It is not anymore going to v2 and v3. So you, you, with simple uh, uh, command line, uh, like simple YML uh, rules, you, you are able to control how the traffic uh, flows across your uh, microservices. So which is pretty powerful in case of microservices, right? And then um, what I'm going to show you is basically the other uh, controlled process. Like, let's say uh, you have a version two, uh, which is basically having some other new features, but you don't want to release it for everyone. You only want to release it to few folks. Um, like maybe the user uh, uh, name is Jason. Uh, there's like a test user. You want to release to only that user or a bunch of users who are doing testing. Okay. So what you can do is uh, simply apply that rule, uh, which says if the destination is to reviews uh, microservice and the cookie contains um, a user called JSON, go to version two instead of version one. Okay, pretty pretty simple explanatory, like, like self-explanatory here. So I'm going to apply that rule. Uh, before that rule, let me um, show you uh, by logging in as JSON here. So I'm going to log in as JSON. So even as JSON, I only see the same old or uh, the same version one. So I'm going to apply this rule. Now, if after applying this rule, if I hit this, I see the version two of my application. Okay. So, and this is only visible for JSON. If I go as normal user, I only see my old version. So it, you can see my reviews is going to again old version. Okay. Now, if I go back and then log in as my J user called JSON, it is going to version two of it. So, in a very controlled way and very in a, in a very intuitive way, you can actually control the uh, request routing process, and then you can do some sort of canary deployments as well. It may be the it may be like a user location. Uh, it can be some some other parameter instead of like user equal to JSON, right? So. If, you have, if your application is spread across multiple geolocations and you want to test your microservice only for a specific location, you can actually put, put some header in that and then basically decide um, based on that header value. So you can roll out your new versions uh, pretty easily to a, a, a specific geolocation. This is, this is like a pretty powerful feature. All right. So any questions on that? All right, cool. So um, uh, once that is done, let's go and see uh, how we can uh, basically uh, deploy uh, some other features like uh, you want to, uh, let's say the version two has some bug in it, okay? And then you want to deploy version three, version three um, uh, version of your re review application. So uh, I've already deployed there, but it's, it's not in use. So we can basically uh, split the traffic between version one and version three um, like this. So if we go uh, take a look inside this um, uh, YML file, that shows if the request is to reviews page and I want to split the traffic, uh, traffic between version one and version three with different weights, so 50-50%. This, this rule is seems to be pretty simple, right? So all you need to do is go and apply this. I've applied that rule, and then if I refresh this, for uh, it would equally distribute uh, um, weight across two different versions. Um, this is user JSON, so I'm gonna skip that and then switch to normal user. That should show you. Uh, this is not like a round robin. Uh, that's what I observed. Uh, it happens like for a bunch of requests basically switches between version one and version three so you can see it is now on version three uh, and some after some requests it will go to version one again um, it's definitely like 50 50 percent but it won't appear like round robin fashion so you can now see it is going to uh, version one so it is now switching between version one and version three uh, all you need to do is apply this simple rule uh, which is like they're pretty much readable. So this this rule, all you need to say is for reviews application, uh, 
for reviews microservice um, it should go between version 1 and version 3 by applying these weights okay so uh, pretty easy to control um, your traffic split as well it's not just um, not 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 only based on header values, but also you can basically uh, split the traffic as well. Okay, so um, any any questions on this? Okay, so once that is there, um, let's say my uh, third version is stable now, and I want to switch all the traffic to uh, version three. All you need to do is. Uh, apply this rule. Uh, let's go and take a look what what exactly is there inside this rule. So my rule says the presence is one, so the priority is one, and then hundred percent of my traffic should go to version three. That's all. Okay. So now uh, instead of going to two versions, it will only go to my third version because that's what um, is my latest version. So you can see if I do control refresh now, it is always going to uh, version three of my application, which is which is very powerful. Okay, so uh, with 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 a minimal configuration or with a minimal effort, I was able to achieve features like uh, canary deployments, um, features like um, location based or maybe user account based uh, routing, and then uh, split traffic across multiple services. Um, and, uh, and also release uh, application specific to users. So a lot of good features uh, without having to do a lot of um, coding on the uh, development side. And for developers, this is like a, I would say it's a pretty big boon because they don't have to write all these uh, code now. OK, uh, I, I will uh, create some more uh, uh, videos. Um, mostly based on some other features like fault injections and then also uh, other features that Istio offers in future. Um, I know this kind of like uh, in the beginning I had a I had a technical issue and then um, it looks like no one is able to see that um, initial part. Um, but um, I'll see if I can uh, do a testing with some other person. Uh, next time, uh, so that there will be no technical glitches there. Um, but um, this is this is all I have uh, for today to show. Um, this shows installations, uh, deploying, and then some features of uh, Istio on top of Kubernetes. Uh, but if you have more questions, feel free to put in uh, put in the chat window here or um, send me questions on uh, GitHub. I'll definitely. Uh, share so my email is uh, I'm putting my email on uh, chat okay you got my email so um, if you have any questions um, feel free to post them I'll be here for another five to uh, 10 minutes. Let me see if my Grafana thing is working. So it's not, it's not working. Yeah. But um, like I said, the time time issue on the Docker for Mac is something which bugged me for a lot of time. Um, and then uh, this got fixed automatically. Okay. Any more questions? I think we have time for some more time. Uh, some more time. So let's uh, take another example. Uh, I think uh, fault injection would be another uh, good example. So let me give you that details. So. Um, Fault injection is a way of uh, introducing faults inside microservices and then observing how your microservice behaves when things go wrong. Okay, so let's say uh, you have a bunch of services and one of the services is behaving incorrectly or adding a lot of delay. How that affects all other microservices? You want to test that thing, right? 
so it's easy to um, uh, implement those kind of injecting inject those fault uh, uh, faults into your microservices as well so let's go and take a look here so um, i have these um, i need for the same book book for the same book uh, uh, info application what we are going to do is we will add delay to our ratings microservices okay so we will basically introduce like seven second delay on the rating service so how do i do that um, i need to uh, establish to the new rules first like the initial rules uh, which, so let me show you that so this is how you do it so on the rating service uh, you want to test it only for specific users you don't want to test it for all the users because you don't want to break your production traffic so what you do is for a specific user called json you can add a fixed delay like seven second delay uh, for your microservice just by uh, introducing this um, int introducing this uh, uh, rule you will add a seven second delay for json uh, user and then you can test like how it, how the application gets um, uh, like how the applications are behaving when you have this uh, seven second delay okay so if you want to see the existing rules, you can just type like Istio get route rule, and then uh, maybe I will delete the existing ones, delete uh, route rule, and then apply the new ones. So delete all of them so that I can start clean, OK? Now what I'm going to do is apply the default rules that basically everything goes to version one, okay? And there is a another rule which basically tells you that user user JSON uh, needs to um, go to like reviews, but version two version, okay? So I'm going to add that the same thing which we have seen before, and then now I'm adding the uh, delay related rule. The, relate, the delay related rule is pretty simple. You have seen it here, okay? Now, uh, if I go back and then if I hit this page, you can see the page is loading pretty quickly. Uh, it shows the version one of application, but if I log in as user JSON, the load time you can see it, it happens only after seven seconds because we introduce that fault inside this uh, system that it needs to load after seven seconds and then obviously i've seen when it, when the things took longer uh, it basically broke and then our uh, reviews page is not visible anymore okay so that gives you uh, how your applications uh, how your microservices behaving when you inject faults inside the uh, inside one of the, one of these services or a bunch of services okay so um very easy to uh, manage, like do a lot of microservices uh, related operational stuff. Uh, this becomes like a YAML files instead of you doing it manually or maybe writing a lot of code around that. All right, any more questions? Okay, cool. So uh, we are almost at the top of the hour. So, um, I'm going to conclude this uh, talk, and then uh, I'll also look forward for you to join the other uh, talks on the uh, different other features of Istio. I only covered like maybe 20% of the features. Um, there are a lot of the features that Istio provides. Um, I would encourage you to join the other uh, meetups as well. Yes, I did uh, record this. I think it's it will be like a YouTube live, so you can definitely go and take a look on the YouTube. Yeah, it's 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 a YouTube live event, so it will be recorded. Okay. All right, so if you don't have any questions, uh, we'll call it a day.
All right. Thank you.